Okay. Call. Hello. Yum. Al. Yahawa. Ba. Hashem. Yaha. Washai. All right. That's all praises to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. Okay, this is Soja Yalo. Alright, today it's going to be the first of many, Lord willing, uh, Paleo Hebrew uh, lessons. Okay, uh, Officer Pacquiao from Sakari, Toronto, um, who happens to be my officer, you know, you know, encouraged me uh, to to start doing these Hebrew lessons. All right, so I want to give a I give a shout out to that brother, and uh, for you know again encouraging me to do this um, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai um, within within about a year that I've been. Uh, in the truth, I've been able to uh, learn a lot about the Hebrew, to to study the the Paleo Hebrew um, on a certain level, and you know what they say, um, the easiest way to the best way to learn is to um, is to teach. All right, I want to give. Uh, also say uh salat. I want to say Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai Baraka Thumb to the Akim out there, you know, who pushes this word and truth and sincerity. Why Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai Baraka Thumb to the elders out there who taught us this truth and who labor in this truth. All right, and I want to also um, give a shout out to to one of the elders from the house of David, uh, Elder uh, Karata Zaala. All right. When I first came into the knowledge of me being an Israelite, you know, even before I even started understanding the the the, the all the tenets of the the doctrines, all right, the the basic tenets of uh, exclusive salvation for the nation of Israel, you know, understanding things like regeneration and things like, you know, lunar Shabbat, things like that. Before I came into fully understanding these things, right, under, fully understanding who the Gentiles that Paul was writing to in, in the, uh, in the so-called New Testament, you know, this, the most high put the spirit on me to to want to learn, uh, the Hebrew, uh, the Paleo Hebrew, and I learned a lot of that from this brother, um, this elder, the Zaquan Karata Zaala, all right, from the house of David. All right, so starting off with this lesson is going to be uh, just some some basics. All right, we're going to go first into what I call the the Paleo Hebrew Alap Bayath. All right, so the word alphabet comes goes back to the Greek word uh, alphabetos. All right, in the Greek, the first letter of the Greek alphabet or alphabetos is alpha. The second letter is bet uh is beta, where you get the word alphabet or alpha betos, right? So with the Hebrew characters, all right, with we're gonna call this the alapayath. Or if you ask you know, a Jewish person they will say the Aleph Bet, right? But here are here is a chart that I created uh with the paleo script, the modern script, the transliterations, the numerical values, and the paleo root and its meaning, right? So, the paleo Hebrew is also known as pictograph Hebrew or ancient uh, Sinaitic Canaanite. It has so many different names for it. It's it's all the same language, right? And these are the different characters. 
All right, these are the different characters in the paleo, and these are the corresponding um, modern Hebrew characters. All right, so this character and this character are exactly the same. Okay, they're the same. They have the same sound, but there's just a different form of writing. All right, for example, this paleo would be handwriting. A modern script would be like writing in cursive. Still writing Hebrew, all right? It's just a different way of writing the characters, all right? So to speak. So this chart is going to be helpful um, for, for Akiyam, Wa'ak, Wa'akiyam um, to, you know, learn the characters, especially in the beginning stages. So when I started learning Hebrew um, and, and trying to read you know, certain things in Torah or in what's called the Tanakh, you know, the old so-called Old Testament, you know, when you're studying, you're going into resources like the uh, Blue Letter Bible, you're going to see the modern script. You're not going to see the paleo script. So learning both scripts is going to help you further in your studies, all right? Now, what you're going to notice in the modern script is that there are things called final characters all right so for instance the word the hebrew word for water or waters is mayim all right you go down here right underneath the la the lamed or the lamad you have the mem or the ma right in the modern script and then right underneath that there's another character that's called the final mem or the final ma now, when you write the word, let me, let me just show, for example, all right? So, let's go to the Hebrew, all right? This, this would be written as, a lot it's kind of see it's kind of hard to know where these characters correspond uh these characters correspond on your your qwerty keyboard all right i'm just using my regular uh apple keyboard on my ipad this will be written as such This would be written as such. So you have Mayim in the in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Ma, the Ya, and the Ma. It's, it's just one Ma. But in the modern Hebrew, you have what's again what you call final characters. Let me let me show show it a little better. Hebrew alphabet, right? So you again you have the Aleph, the Bet, right? You keep on going and you see you have what? You have a a ka or the kaf, then you have a final kaf, right? And then you have the lamed, then you have a mem, and then you have a final mem, a nun, a final nun, all right? You have a, a pa or a final pa. Same thing with the the sadi, what they call, which is really the taza. Okay. And you have a final taza. So that's what you're going to see when you're reading, let's say, when you're reading, say this, for example. This is the Shema, and it reads, Shema, and again, Hebrew is read from right to left. So you read Shema, Yasha'ala, Yahweh, Allah, Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad, right? 
That's just not a good example. Let's uh let's keep going. Let's keep going. If you go to I believe Alright, boom. And it reads Wa Ahab Habath Ath Yahawa Allah Hayaka. All right, now, this is something that we'll go over in future lessons, but the root word here is Allah, or power, right? When you read the scriptures, Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When you go back into the Hebrew, it says, Allah Hayim, which means, ha, well, Ha Allah Hayim, Salah, Ha Allah Hayim, which means the powers, that Yum makes it plural. All right, you'll ask, you know, a Jewish person, they'll say, Ha Elohim, right? But Ha Alahayim. Now, again, the root word is Allah, okay? We're right here on this word. The root word is Allah, the, the A and the La. The Hayaka, the Hayaka the makes it possessive, which means your power. This means your God or your power. That ka right there is a final ka. So you'll see that, right? Now, the next next character, next word, all right? So it reads, Wa'ahabath, and love Yahweh, your power, ba'kal, with all, Lababka. Lababka uh, means heart. So you see the La, the Ba, another Ba, and the final Ka. But right here, in this word right here, you see Ba. In the middle, you see, that's also a Ka, but that's not a final Ka. It's not at the end of the, the, of the word. So it's Bakal. Bakal, Lababka. Wa bakal napashka wa bakal ma'adka. All right, so as you can see, you got a final ka here and a final ka on this word. But when you see bakal, it's a lot. Bakal, that second character from the right is a regular ka. So that's the difference between the modern and the ancient. I like the ancient better because it just, honestly, it's easier to write. It looks cooler and it's it's the original. This is what, what the Ten Commandments would have been written in. This is what, you know, the prophets of old would have been writing in. So that's, to me, that's something that's more interesting, all right? in this modern script this this came over time you know as we went into different captivities and and picked up different customs and whatnot all right so you again you have uh you have your final ka you have your final uh your final uh mem or your final ma your final nun or final na final pa final taza all right but again this uh the link to this chart is going to be in the description box. Um, so just for reference, if you want to start typing things out, again, like I said, trying to type the Hebrew with a regular QWERTY keyboard is a little, a little confusing sometimes. So let's, let me think of another word. For instance, this word non right in the hebrew all right it would in the modern hebrew you would write it as such okay you have a na the regular na let me do that again watch watch the keystrokes regular na Final na, non, seed. 
Okay. Seeds, uh, plural will be actually, you would really just write it as such. And Nanium. That's how you would write it in that modern script. But for the most part, people want to learn the Paleo Hebrew, all right? You're going to be, if you're going to be typing, you're going to be typing with the moder with the paleo alphabet. Now, I'm going to have links to um, an app that you can download on on your on your uh, on your iPhone. I believe it's also available for um, Android, but I don't have access to the Android store, so I won't be able to get the link for you. Um, but if you just type in Paleo Hebrew. Um, keyboard in your Google Play Store, you should be able to find it. But again, I'm going to have the actual link for the Apple Store, for the Apple App Store for, you know, Aki and Wath, Wathium who have iPhones. All right. So they can go ahead and, and download that and install it on their computer. I think it may cost about two, three dollars, but it's worth having. Right. So again, here are your paleo and your modern scripts. Here are the transliterations. All right, how you would pronounce this character? So, the alpha, the Hebrew alphabet would go as such: Abaga Daha Waza Chata Yaka La Manasa Ipa Taza Kwa Shatha. That's how you would say each of those characters. So, let's go into. Let's get a little. What's my pen? Let's go into some transliterations, all right? So we're going to cover, again, we covered the alphabet. We're going to cover trans, the difference between transliteration and translation, all right? So let's see what, let's use the word, this word in the Hebrew, Okay. Now, the translation of this word is book. You're literally taking the word from the original language and equating it to the word that you would use in your language. So... Translation of water into Spanish would be agua. Same way this word translated into English would be book. Now, what is this word in the Hebrew? It's sapar. Sapar is the word. All right. Now, the transliteration would be you going, you're converting these characters to characters that are in the language that you're, you're converting to when you're maintaining and keeping the integrity and try to keeping and trying. Again, you, you have to try to keep the integrity of how that word was sound. So, for instance, Yahawashai is the name of the son in Hebrew. All right, Yahawashai is his name, right? It's tran You cannot translate his name. You can simply transliterate his name. Now, the transliteration of his name would be going from the Hebrew characters, whether it's the modern or the Paleo characters, to the Greek. Now, the transliteration of Yahushai into Greek is Jesus. Jesus. That would be his name. Okay? All right. Another example would be... Uh, let's see. Hmm... 
the prophet Isaiah, all right, his name in the Hebrew is Yeshaya, but in the Greek it's Isaias. That's how you would say it in the Greek. That's the transliteration. So the transliteration of this word right here, this Hebrew word, would be Sapar. All right. Now, again, you have you're gonna have a link to this chart, which has the transliterations. So, for instance, let's say you are a brother coming into the truth, right? Let's say you are a brother from the tribe of, say, from the tribe of, I mean, tribe of Gad. You're, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Gad, all right? Uh... Boom. And let's say you want to pick a, a Gadite name. All right. It's a lot. All right. Boom. Here we are in Genesis, the 46th chapter, in verse 16. And the sons of Gad, Ziphian and Haggi, Shunai and Esbon, Eri and Aradai and Arali. Right. So. Let's say you want to choose one of these names. All right, you go to you go to the let's say you want to go with this name right here, Ziphian, right? So we're going to correspond these modern letters into the Paleo letters. All right, so the first character is the Taza. So you have the Taza, you got the Pa, you got the Ya, next you have the Wa, and then you have the Na. Alright? How you would transliterate this name would be Taza, Pa, Taza Pa, Ya, One. That's how you would transliterate that name, okay? Taza Pa Ya One, Taza Pa Ya One, Taza Pa Ya One. That's how you would transliterate it. So, for instance, this is my name. In the Hebrew. Okay, it's transliterated as such, Arayala, Arayala, okay, Arayala, that's my name, transliterated into Hebrew. For instance, another example, let's go with Yashala. which means he Prince God or power. He's a prince of power. So this would be transliterated as Yah Sha You have the Ra, but you drop off that A sound because there's a connector there. And then Ah and then La. So the transliteration would be Ya Sha Ala. That's how you transliterate. Okay? So that's the difference between translation and transliteration. This word is this word right here, Sapar, translation into English would be book. Translation into Spanish would be Libro. Transliteration, all right, into Spanish or English would be Sapar because Spanish, all right, English, French, they share the same alphabet or characters. It's a different language, but it shares the same alphabet or, or collection of characters or letters, all right? So that's the difference between translation 
and transliteration. So, when it comes to, again, trying to choose a name for yourself, you know, if you're new into the truth and you and there's a there's a certain name you like in the Hebrew, okay, but you would you can utilize that chart, okay, the chart that's going to be in the link, the link of this video, and you can use that chart to properly transliterate that name. If you have some problems, feel free to reach reach out in the comment boards. Okay, you can hit me up on Facebook as well. Okay. Um, and, and I can help you out. So that's translation versus transliteration. Now, let's go into making something plural. Alright? Making a noun plural. So, let's take this root right here. This is again Allah power all right to make the plural of this would be Allah ha yum all right the yum makes it plural Allah ha yum the powers okay another example Let's take the word. Let's take the word for ox. All right, which is a lop. To make it plural, all you're going to do is add. The yum at the end. So it's. It's a lop yum. So you got ox. Now you have ox. I am tripping. Oxen. That's how you make a word plural. Now. There's some things to keep in mind when making uh, words plural. Now, for instance, let's take this word right here. Zayan. Zayan. Okay. Zayan. To make this plural, you're going to add a wath at the end. You're going to add a wath at the end. Now, let's, let me clear something up. This the masculine, yum, then the feminine is wath. Okay? So, again, you take alap and add yum. You have cattle or oxen, right? Now, the word Zayan, all right, when a root word or root noun ends in a na or a tha, all right, you're going to, you're going to, to make it plural, you're going to add wath. So the example would be, first example would be Zayan, to make this plural you're going to add the wath because it ends in a na or an n. Zayan, Zayan wath. Another example would be this word. Shabbat. Right? To, 
make Sabbath plural, it would be Sabathwath. Sabathwath. That's how you would make Sabbath plural. Okay? Now, next. Salah. The next topic, and this is going to be the last topic for today, would be pronouns. Actually, I'm going to do two topics. I'm going to do pronouns, and then I'm going to do possessive adjectives. All right, so in this column, you're going to have your singular and over here, we're going to have our plural. All right, so pronouns. I, me, you, he, she, we, they. Those are pronouns, all right? So I, in the Hebrew, all right, is anya. It'll be transliterated as on, yeah, now notice again, you get the connector here, so you would drop off that ah sound at the end of the na. All right, so it's on, yeah. You would be a tha. That is you. Okay, so if I'm speaking to a singular brother, one brother, I'll say Shalom, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, Baraka, Tha, right? Now, the plural of that, if I'm speaking to multiple brothers, it's important for you to properly use the proper pronoun, all right? So, You mass uh, you slot you. It's a difference between masculine and feminine too. If I'm speaking to a group of brothers, okay, I would say Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai Baraka Thama, with an, with a ma. Okay. Ah, uh, thumb. Okay, so now back on the singulars. Okay, the next pronoun would be he. Okay, and he would be Hawa'a. Transliterated as Ha Wa A. That is he in the Hebrew. Okay. Now she would be ha ya a. Transliterated as such. Ha ya a. This is how you would say it, okay? Now we in the Hebrew, this is a we is plural, it's multiple people, okay? Is anach nawa. Anach nawa. Okay, now, writing Hebrew, reading Hebrew, okay, you're going to find yourself being stronger at one thing than the other, right? So, for instance, I feel like I can read and understand and speak Hebrew better than I can write it, right? So, one of the reasons being is because Hebrew is written from right to left. Now, left-handed people... All right, they're going to have a really easy time writing in Hebrew or even something like Arabic writing from right to left because that is just natural to go in that direction. All right. Now, with us writing in English, all right, we write from left to right in English, trying to 
as a right-handed person, going into the Hebrew, writing in the Hebrew, can be a little difficult because you're, you're not used to going in that opposite direction. So sometimes what I would what I do is I write it, I write the word in Hebrew the way it's supposed to be read, but I write it backwards. And you'll see it as I'm going to write the word Anach Nawa, all right? So this is the Wa. This is the slot. Na. All right. Here's the Kha. Here's the other Na. And here's the A. So you would read it from right to left. But as you saw, I wrote it from left to right. Sometimes I do that just because I'm a little bit more comfortable because writing English, you write in this direction. It's hard to write in this direction. You feel me? So, this is, the word is Anach Nawa. Alright. And that will be transliterated as A Na Na Wa. Anachnawa. That's we in the Hebrew. Okay? Now, here is you feminine. Now, again, Hebrew is a masculine dominant language, just how Spanish and French are. Alright? If I'm speaking to a group, uh, say I'm a, a teacher and I'm speaking to a group of students, alright? It's a mixture of boys and girls. I'm going to say, Hola, buenos dias, niños. Or, hola, buenos dio, dios, muchachos. If I'm talking to a group of boys. If I'm talking to a group that's mixed of boys and girls, I'm going to say, hola, muchacha, muchachos. If I'm speaking to a group of girls, it'll be, hola, muchachas. But if there's at least one boy in that group, okay, if it's a mixed group, I'm going to say muchachos, and that would include both the males and the females. All right, so when you read in the Hebrew, when it says, and the word of the Lord came to Moses, saying, speak to the children of Israel, that word for children is banium. All right, the Hebrew word for son is ban, and then the plural will be yum, okay? Banyam, but it gets translated as children because the children of Israel include males and females because Hebrew is a masculine dominant language and we're going to address them as Banyam. Okay? You're not going to address them as ban, uh, Banathium, which would be daughters. Okay? Banya means sons, but it also means children, okay? And that's the point that I'm making with that. So, with these pronouns, all right, the female version of you would be athana, athan, okay? So, if I'm speaking to a bunch of sisters, I would say shalawan makwathiam, yahawah ba'ashom, Yahushai Barakathan. Barakathan. It's real easy to get that Athan and the Atham mixed up. But this is how you say it when you're speaking to just women. If you're talking to a group of people, again, you'll say Yahweh Bashim, Yahushai Barakathan. Right, there's males and females, alright? Now, the next pronoun would be the word they. Okay, we're going to have the masculine version. Alright, and they, in the Hebrew, is hum. It's transliterated as hum. Hum. And then you have they, feminine. If you can see the pattern, this is a thumb, this is a thon, this would be hun. And those 
are your pronouns. So, let me get, let's take a look in the scripts real quick. I'm going to show you one of these words. In the scripts, uh, let's go to the Song of Solomon. Alright, so it reads Shakawara Anya Wa Naawa Banwath Yara Wa Shalom. Alright, so it says Black I am. Black, you see the word Anya. So this. Is the same as Anya, okay? I. So again, it reads black, I am, and, okay, beautiful. Black, I am, and beautiful. Ban Wath, right? Like, at or as Ban Wath, okay, the daughters Yarawashalam of Jerusalem. So, in this example, the translators of the KJV didn't do the best job. Of translating this because they have it as I am black but comely there's no but okay there's no but here it says Shakawara all right Shakawara Anya Wa this right here this first character in this word is Wa which means and okay and that's something I'm gonna teach you guys uh, in another lesson that right there's wa, all right, and na, and the word the root word would be na awa. Black I am. And, beautiful, okay. So that's an example of, the word. Of anya being in, in the scripts. Now let's go to the next and the last. Last um important topic. For understanding the Paleo Hebrew or it's Hebrew in general, right, are possessive. All right, possessive pronouns. Slot. Possessive adjectives. So, what a possessive adjective is something that shows ownership right or show something belonging to right so for instance if I want to say my God so for instance when, when how I was on the cross he said Eli Eli Sabachthani right he really would have said Allah Yah Allah Yah God Allah the I This is God or power. He said, Allah Yah. Allah Yah. This Yah means my. It makes it possessive. When you see Yah at the end of a word, it makes it possessive. Okay? So let me just give you guys those and give you a couple of examples. So you have your singular. You have them for singular nouns. Then you have them for plural nouns. Okay. All right. So my would be 
ya. Okay, your would be ka. So, another example, let's go to Deuteronomy 6. So, Shammai, or Shammai prayer, all right? You see right here, Allah Hayaka, Allah Hayaka, your God. That Ka makes it your. So it reads, Wa Ahabath Ath Yahweh Allah Hayaka. And love Yahweh your God. Okay? So that's an example. Alright? You go into I'm going to go into this in a second. Let me give you the next one. Alright, you got his. Okay, his would be Wa. At And this is at the end. Now, just like for instance, the end of a word in Hebrew, again, because Hebrew goes from right to left, the end of the word would be right here, not right here, all right? Now, if I wanted to say, oh my God, in Spanish, I would say, all right, I, Dios, Mio. Okay. This is the noun. This is the possessive adjective. Okay. Adios mio. Oh my God. Really, oh God my. So just like in Spanish, all right, you're going to put the possessive adjective at the end of the word. So my, again, my God, again, we right, go from right to left in Hebrew, not left to right. You got Allah, Yah, Allah, Yah, my God, or my power. That's how you would, you would write it. So another example would be right here in the Shammai, right, it's the Shammai, Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh Achad, all right, that Yanawa, okay, that Yana, that, that Nawa means our, and I'm going to get to that in a second, so let me just finish up this list, you got her, her would be Ha again at the end. So, example, her book would be Saparha. That would be her book. You put it at the end, okay? Now, the next possessive adjective would be our, and it's nawa. So again, alahaya nawa, our power, right? So listen, Israel, Yahweh, our power, Yahweh is one, or Yahweh alone. Okay, that's what this that's what that reads. Shemai Shemai Yasha Allah Yahawa Allah Haya Nawa these two last characters Nawa Yahawa Achad. Okay? So that's our the next one will be yours masculine and that is come.
So, for instance, if I want to say the God, the God of our fathers. Okay. Now, Father in Hebrew is Abba. Right? So, how to write this would be, the would be ha, a, Allah, ha, ya, Allah, ha, ya. Abba Nawa the the power of our fathers this is the okay I have to make Allah possessive, all right? Actually, actually, that would just be. Um, Abba Nawa. So our father would be the root word is Abba. The Nawa that would be at at the end of this of this root to make it possessive. This is the hour. This is the father. Actually. I even messed that up. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. So I, I did not. Abinawa. No, I did. Because it's our father's. So, to make that. Because I got to make Abba. See, this is why teaching also helps you to to remember and and learn, right? So you have Abba Yum Nawa. Abba Yum Nawa. Ha Allah Hayum Abba Yum Abba Yum Nawa. This is Father's And this is our. You see that? But let's continue with the list. Let's continue with the list. And I still got to do the plural side. And then I'm going to wrap this joint up. All right. All right. So you got yours masculine. Yours you guessed it, feminine. And yours, feminine is con. Okay. Next, you have there. Get there, masculine. Yeah, there. Feminine. And that's Ma. And then you got Na. And 
and that's your singular for singular nouns these are your possessive adjectives now plural your my is going to still be ya all right so if I want to say brothers, I would say Akimya, my brothers. If I say my brother, it would be Akya, Akya, Akimya. Right? So Ya would be for, also for plural nouns for my. Your plural would be Yaka. His plural will be Yawa. So, for instance, if I want to say his his cattle, right? His cattle. So, cattle. Remember, is a lop. So it would be a lop. This is plural. A lop. Yum. Yawa. A lop yum yawa. His cattle. You see? Her would be Yaha. Okay, our four plural would be Yanawa. Okay. So again, yeah, Alaha Yanawa. All right. I don't know why it's not just, you know. Alanawa. I'm I'm not sure why it's not that. You know, there's this there's irregularities, just how there's irregular verbs and irregular things and in English and same thing with Spanish or French. You have irregular verbs when you conjugate things in Spanish, same thing with the Hebrew. I'm not sure exactly why, but it just is what it is. Alright? You have Alahayanawa. Alaha. The Yanawa makes it plural. I mean, it makes it possessive. Okay? So he's our... Whenever you see the Lord God, it says Yahweh Alahayim. Yahweh Alahayim. Alahayim means the powers. I think the, the reason why it it's describing him as being multiple powers is because he's the most high power. Right? So you have Yanawa. Okay. Yours masculine for plural nouns would be Yakum. Yakum. Okay. Yours feminine would be Yakun. Okay, their masculine for plural nouns would be yum. And then their feminine masculine uh slot feminine plural nouns would be yun. a lot. That's is your ma and your na. Okay? So, you have ya, ka, wa, ha, na, na, wa, kum, kun, ma, na for your singular. You have ya, ya, ka, ya, wa, ya, ha, ya, na, wa, ya, kum, uh, ya, kun, ya, ma, and ya, na. Okay? And those are your possessive adjectives, okay? It shows ownership or relation to a specific noun, 
okay and then you also have your your pronouns so for instance let's give an example if I want to tell someone that I love you all right we'll go as such Anya, so an an ya ahab ata, just like that. So I love you. And this is you singular. All right. If I want to say I love you. All okay. I would write Anya Ahab Ah Thumb. Okay. And again, if I was speaking to, let's say I had nothing but daughters, and I wanted to tell them, I love you, Anya, Ahab, Athan, Athan, because you, feminine, plural, would be Athan. Okay? So again, so you have a lot of the basics you can now make. Things masculine, um, uh, slot plural, make nouns plural. You know, you know the the difference between translation and transliteration. You also know, okay, uh, your your pronouns, and then you have your possessive adjectives. Now, again, just for recap, you're going to have access to this chart. The Alat Bayath chart. Okay. I'm also going to have a link in the bio to. Okay. This. Show it to you. Paleo Hebrew. Um, keyboard. Okay. Paleo Hebrew keyboard. And I'm also going to give you a link to. A, a vocab sheet that I created. A Hebrew vocab sheet. Um. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a Google Doc, a Google Sheet. Now, basically what I did was I went from all right, so this website, all right, the real hero Israelite.com, okay, they have all of these words okay they have these vocab words more words for beginners so what I did was this is just a list you know you can go to this website right the real Hebrew Israelites dot com but what I did was I took that whole list that they had and I created a spreadsheet so that what you can do is you can go ahead and sort it by the Hebrew Okay, I can sort it by the English. So, again, it's not a lot of work. There's a good amount of words on here. Every word ain't going to be on here. Okay, so you can sort it in by the English. And you can sort it by, of course, the Hebrew. Okay, you know, I started on working. I started working on categorizing it by part of speech, you know, as well as giving categories adding the Strong's uh, concordance numbers to some of them, you know, as I found them. Um, but yeah, this link will also be in the bio as well as a resource for, for Akin Wa Wafium. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, with that, okay, I'm going to give Kohalo Yahawa by Shem Yahosha. Again, that's Kohalo Yahawa by Shem Yahosha. All praise to the Most High, whose name is Yahawa, all right, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahosha. 
Let's say Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barak a thumb, right? A Barak a thumb, plural, to, all right, you brothers and sisters, okay? Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barak a thumb to all you brothers and sisters, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barak a thumb to all the Akim out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity. Why? Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Rock a thumb to the elders out there who labor in this truth and who taught us this truth. Until next time, all right, let's say Shalom.